It's the end of an era as Scotts Bluff's lone drive-in movie theater closes for good. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, it was a creation of necessity from the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, but after nearly a four-year run, the Midwest Theater's Skyview Drive-In at the Western Nebraska Regional Airport is closed. In March of 2020, the first Skyview Drive-In was opened at the Legacy of the Plains Museum, and later that summer, the operation moved to the Scottsdale Airport, becoming a favorite destination for not only local residents, but also for visitors from around the region. Midwest Theater Executive Director Tina Worthman tells KNB News, with the resurgence of interest in the offerings at the Midwest Theater downtown, the board decided it was time for the Skyview to close. There had just been increasing operational costs and um, visitors had just, the numbers had dwindled pretty drastically in the last couple of years. So, you know, we just decided that with the marquee being back and refurbished and all bright and shiny and um, we've had increased visitation downtown, that that was the direction to take for the future. Worthman says they will be partnering with local businesses and organizations to provide family-friendly outdoor movie entertainment following certain Western Nebraska Pioneers games during the summer months. Well, the gavel comes down hard on a Bridgeport man who stole tens of thousands of dollars worth of cash and merchandise from a Morrill County eye care clinic. On Monday, 45-year-old Alejandro Soto was sentenced to 60 days in jail, four years of probation, and nearly $17,000 in restitution on top of the $9,300 he's already paid back to Web Eye Care. Soto was originally facing 45 theft counts, but late last year he pleaded no contest to a single felony count of theft by taking. District Court Judge Andrea Miller ordered that the jail sentence will not start until this coming Monday, and the restitution payments shall be $350 a month until paid off in full. And a South Dakota man who was one of three arrested following a massive drug bust near the Wildcat Hills in July has struck a plea deal to avoid standing trial. Last month in district court, Skyler Lammers pleaded no contest to charges of distribution of fentanyl, possession of a controlled substance, and no drug tax stamp, as well as agreeing to forfeit his F-250 pickup. Lammer was pulled over for speeding on Highway 71, and a police canine helped alert officers to drugs, including nearly 1,400 fentanyl pills, methamphetamine, and a pay-o sheet. Lammers will be sentenced on March 28th. Charges against the other two co-defendants have been dismissed. We'll have more news right after this. The journey of a dream becoming reality. When we're young, a dream develops into a passion. That passion continues to manifest and grows as you do. It becomes all you want to do and all you want to be. It gives you direction. It drives you. Then your dream has become a reality. When that dream is ready to be reality, Platte Valley Bank will be with you every step of the way. Welcome back. Nebraska U.S. Senator Pete Ricketts Wednesday criticized the Biden border supplemental bill for containing insufficient policy changes to secure the border. Ricketts said we must have a border bill that forces Biden to enact real policy change. And this bill just doesn't get the job done. The National Border Patrol Council sent a letter today to Senator Lindsey Cram with three ideas that could make this bill better as one example of what we could do a thousand encounter threshold instead of 5,000, actually detaining instead of catch and release, and a cap on parole. While there are good things in this bill, 
we must have a border bill that forces President Biden to enact real policy change. Rick, it says the Biden administration created this crisis on our border, and if he wanted to, he could end it today. And an all-encompassing scholarship has been announced for some of Nebraska's brightest students. Governor Jim Pillen, the University of Nebraska's interim president, and the Board of Regents have announced a new scholarship for the state's top ACT scorers. Beginning in next school year, the new Nebraska Presidential Scholars Program will cover tuition, fees, books, housing, and a $5,000 annual stipend for any Nebraska student who scores a perfect 36 on the ACT and attends any NU campus. The new scholarship is part of a comprehensive plan to reverse Nebraska's brain drain and compete more efficiently for talent. Are new windows from Renewal by Anderson a great investment? You're darn right they are. Did you know that for less than your cable bill or cell phone bill each month, you could have new windows from Renewal by Anderson right now? Do the math. Renewal by Anderson windows will likely cut your energy bills significantly. They will likely substantially increase the value of your home. They're a great investment. Please contact our team now and ask about our fantastic financing options with approved credit right now. Renewal by Anderson, a great investment? You're darn right. Now the latest from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, you're driving home our reputation. A flurry of signing day activity between Scotts Bluff and Gehring High School. The first stop yesterday afternoon was over at Gehring High where senior Grady Robbins made his football plans official as he signed with Shadron State College. Um, it's kind of been my whole goal since uh, Boyle told me that I was that it was a possibility my sophomore year and over my sophomore year, my junior and my senior year, it's all been working towards this and I'm glad I decided to. Robbins has been the rock of the gearing program for the last couple of years. He finished his career with 242 tackles as a junior and as a senior. He was top 10 in tackles in Class B. It's meant huge it's it's been my life for the past six years seven years and to see it go away is is a really hard thing because i mean once a bulldog always a bulldog you know now gearing head coach danny o'boyle has consistently referred to robbins as the type of kid that best represents what a gearing football player should be toughness dedication talented and a hard worker you know, something we talk about with all of our kids that want to go on to the next level is how important it is to be able to buy into things and, and become part of something that's bigger than oneself. Um, and Grady epitomizes that. I mean, and you know, he's very selfless, and like you said, he's tough. Um, he's somebody that's always going to get the job done. And, and, you know, just the statements that he made a few minutes ago where he, he credits, you know, his parents and his coaches and his um, teammates for where he's gotten to today. Um, don't get me wrong, Grady has put in a ton of work on his own. Um, he studies the game more than a lot of people that I've ever been around at any level. Um, and it, it's really like having another coach on the field and in the program with Grady. So I know he's going to be able to take those traits to the next level and that'll help him be successful in life as well. Grady Robbins sent to head to the linebacker room with the Eagles signing yesterday to play football at Shadron State. Following the stop at Gearing, it was off to Scotts Bluff High School where one of the top running backs in Class B history was sent to make his decision. Bearcat senior Sebastian Boyle will play at the FCS level after signing with the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina. And I decided to go there because I thought it was the best place for me and where I could show my best capabilities and it just had the best uh, stuff for my future I want to be. Boyle played three years at the varsity level for Scott's Bluff after his family moved in from Colorado and being a part of a winning program and tradition along with culture at Scott's Bluff should serve Boyle well moving forward. All those morning practices, all those long journeys with the team, all those competitive games would probably help me 
be as a man and play at such a competitive level. And I'm just ready for the next chapter of my life. As for the stats, well, they're quite impressive. In three seasons, Boyle ran for over 5,000 yards, and he had 68 rushing touchdowns for head coach Judd Hall. Yeah, he's been a really good player for our program. Um, done everything that we've asked of him to do. Um, had a very successful career, but has also been a, a great teammate uh, along the way. So a couple, of, a couple of those things that stand out for Sebastian is that he's uh, first class um, on and off the field and does things the right way. I and mean, I think he'll continue to do that at the, at the Citadel. Scott's Bluff Sebastian Boyle sent to join the military lifestyle and football team at the Citadel in South Carolina. On, on Monday, we'll take a look at a few signings for the Scotts Bluff girls soccer program with Mariah Russell and Ashton Schwartz. Couple quick notes on the way out. District wrestling for boys and girls this weekend. We'll have basketball Friday and Saturday. Scotts Bluff and Gehring making the dueling trips to North Platte and McCook. Cougar men a home game tomorrow night at 6. Cougar baseball opening the season this weekend in New Mexico. That's the latest today from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Morrill County Community Hospital and the behavioral health providers are here to help. Amber Dean specializes in mental health care, which includes medication and therapy across a person's lifespan. Melody Lysey helps people deal with a wide range of behavioral problems, from depression and anxiety to child psychiatry. Our dedicated team is committed to you and our community every time. At Morrill County Community Hospital, Bridgeport, Nebraska. Exceptional care, right here at home. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. Let's take a look at your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. At Platt 
Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And finally tonight, Western Nebraska Community College has named its new Alliance Campus Director. This week, it was announced that Ali Tyree has been selected for the post that has been vacant since 2020. Now, Paula Abbott had been serving as the Executive Director for both the Alliance and Sydney campuses, but Abbott will now be able to focus on the needs of the Sydney campus and the Southern Panhandle, while Tyree will be able to focus on Alliance and the Northern tier of the Panhandle. Tyree began with WNCC back in 2018 as the Executive Secretary of the Alliance Campus and was promoted in 2022 to the Alliance Workforce Specialist. Well, that is it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.